What was your I need to get the d out of here moment? Was drinking with a bunch of friends and ended up leaving with a guy friend to go smoke some weed at his buddy's house. All the alcohol I had been drinking didn't really hit me until we arrived, by which point I was extremely drunk, but proceeded to smoke with the guys as well. My friend's buddy was asking me a bunch of personal questions, during which it got brought up that my father works in law enforcement. The guy proceeds to make a comment about how, if he ever knew someone in law enforcement, he would f*** their daughter as a power move. After several more weird, sexually suggestive comments by both my supposed friend and his buddy, I start internally freaking out, knowing that I don't want to have sex and am too inebriated to consent or to put up much of a fight if they started to try to make a move. I'm 99% certain the only reason I made it out of there okay was because my friend's buddy matched with a long-time crush on Tinder, so he kicked us out so she could come over. On the walk home, my friend kept trying to get us to go back to my dorm room, where we would be alone. I kept insisting we had to go back to our friends, because I knew he wouldn't try to pull anything if all our other friends were around. It was maybe eight blocks to our friend's house. But I was so intoxicated at this point that I would think I was walking straight, only to realize that at some point my friend had led me to the other side of the street or off onto side streets to try to get back to my dorm. Every time I'd realize this, I'd wander back the direction towards our friend's house. But this probably happened three turned four times before he gave up, and we just walked straight to our friend's house. Can't even begin to describe the immense feeling of relief when I stepped through that door. Obviously, men should not be predatory creeps in the first place, but I definitely have been much more cautious in my alcohol and weed consumption since that night. Story 2 my roommate took me to what I thought was just a BBQ at his friend's house. Instead of driving, I figured me, his girlfriend, and him could just carpool in his car. He drives us to a place out in the middle of nowhere. As we pull in, I see about a dozen or more motorcycles parked in along the driveway. I smell BBQ, so I'm not too concerned at this point. I'm thinking, not my usual BBQ, but I'm always willing to meet people outside of my social group. Anyway. So we walk around to the backyard and about a baker's dozen of mean-looking guys and gals are sitting around a fire pit drinking liquor and eating. I couldn't help but notice the 1% patches on their leather vests with another patch that I recognized as a prominent biker gang in the area. Okay, so now I'm starting to panic a little. Fast forward a little bit and some racial slurs started to get thrown around the fire pit with some more vulgarity attached. I've never felt more uncomfortable in a situation. I pull my roommate off to the side and ask him if he could take me home. But he replied, We just got here, man. We can't leave. So I called an Uber, and thank Christ, it was a serviceable area. I got the d*** out of there. Story 3 Worked at a hospital about 10 years ago. It was in a bad neighborhood in the Bronx. At least one or two gunshot victims in our ER daily. I was going out for lunch to a deli across the street. Waiting for the light, I saw a group of people all shouting. Then I saw another group shouting back at them. I stopped, backed up, then heard gunshots. I dropped behind the nearest car, peeked through the window to see which way they were going. Then ran down the subway stairs and through the station to the other side. It was below ground on the other side, so safer. Went in through the rear exit. Ate the crappy cafeteria food with no complaints. Put my resume out there. Took an offer at another hospital in a better neighborhood about a month later. Story 4. My buddy and I in H's took mescaline and went back to his house. As we started peeking, we were smoking cigarettes in his room with the window open. Being that it was February, I put my hood up while we were smoking. Next thing you know, my buddy is mad dogging me and asking me really strange questions like, are you here for her? Is this how it's going to end? He then walks to the bathroom and takes a piss and starts hysterically laughing really loud. It's midnight, so his dad wakes up and finds him laughing his ass off with his pants around his ankles. Dad looks at me and says, what are you two on? I walked downstairs to find a way out, but all the doors were locked and I was tripping balls panicking and couldn't open any doors. Went back up to see what going on, because I heard a commotion. My buddy, pants around ankles, is hanging off a railing on a staircase two feet from the ground, yelling, Dad, please don't let me fall. 
Please don't let me die. I finally remembered the garage was open, so I ran out. I walked home five miles, losing my shit in 20-degree weather in the not-well-lit suburbs. I thought a horse was following me until I realized I could hear the echo of my footsteps. Got home around two and tried to thaw out in the shower and regain my sanity. Later on, my buddy told me what set him off. His mom was dying of cancer, and when I put my hood up, he thought I was the Grim Reaper there to take his mom. He ended up being fine, and I'm not sure how he explained his actions to his dad, but I will never forget that night. Story 5 I was about 12 at the time. I lived with my mom and her husband. It was my 6th grade graduation, and I told my mom that her husband had been sexually assaulting me, and she said I was lying. That's when I knew I had to get the f*** out of there. I packed my bags that night, bawling my eyes out, and I left that night, walked right past her, and she didn't say a word. I never went back or talked to my mother again. My aunt got custody of me and raised me to be who I am today. I wouldn't be where I am without her. I love you, Stephanie. You're the best. Story 6 I went out to a bar in a small town with my extended family as a belated celebration of my 21st birthday. They took me to a place called Irma's. To call the place a dive would be generous. The ceiling was only seven feet off the ground and bowed in the middle. The men's room had two urinals and one toilet with no dividers between any of them. And the bartender didn't know how to make anything more complex than whiskey on the rocks or an ice bucket full of Bud Light. I ordered a Manhattan, and he handed me back something that tasted like artificial pineapple. Despite all that, I had fun. I got drunk with my parents and relatives, played some darts, and ate greasy bar food. Trouble didn't arise until several hours later when I was well and truly inebriated. You see, this tiny dive was the bar of choice in town because it was one of the only bars. Small towns are like that. Problem is, when there's only one bar, you tend to see people you know pop in for a beer every once in a while, and that's especially true of people you don't like. Eventually, some dudes showed up that my cousin had a problem with and drunk me. Got a bad feeling. I grabbed my uncle, who was ding, and my drunk parents and got us all home successfully. We drank some water, drunkenly lamented tomorrow's hangover, and went to bed. The next morning we woke up and were informed by my grandmother that my cousin and his friends had got themselves into a 21-man bar fight and my cousin had been stabbed in the ribs three times. Luckily, he got out of it with minimal complications from his injuries, but I've since made a solemn vow to one, never visit that bar again, and two, trust my drunk intuition more often. Story 7. My dad and I do not have a good relationship. I was still living with my parents in December, but it was not going well. My dad and I weren't even on talking terms. I was very scared of my dad during this time, Randomly during the day, he came to room and knocked on the locked door. I was really scared, so I didn't respond. He knocked again and says, Are you in there? I don't respond again, hoping he'd take that as the answer to his question. Apparently, he asked that, knowing I was in there, because he then started banging on the door and screaming to let him in. As soon as he started banging, I announced I was in the room and that I wanted him to leave me alone. He heard me acknowledged me, and then continued to bang loudly and yell because he didn't get what he wanted. I had no clue what to do, so I did the only thing I could think to do, grab my stuff and get ready to leave. Just before leaving, my dad announced that he was coming in anyway, and then used his strength to break the door lock and open the door. I had to use my foot to stop him from opening it, but then he kept persisting and banging. When it was time for me to run, I opened the door as fast as I could so he wasn't ready for it and would fall, but he caught himself and that only pissed him off more. He kept trying to grab me and push me back and talk to me. I just kept my head down and went to my car. He watched me leave yelling the whole time. He said we were going to have a discussion about this when I returned. I haven't returned. I don't want to return. I never ever want to have a discussion with that man ever again. I'm living with my best friend's family ever since. To my family extended family. It's not socially acceptable to have fled. To all of my friends. To my best friend's family. Including the parents and grandparents. They are super happy that I'm finally out of their house and far away. Story 8. My ex, 25F, and I, 28, were together for over six years. Lived together for about three. I was really struggling with money over the pandemic. Actually, until pretty recently. She always seemed upset I couldn't afford vacations and expensive gifts. 
things of that nature. Even during peak COVID, mostly because she could. She would always deny this if I brought it up, but I've come to believe she was gaslighting, lying about a number of things. Relationship was already not going well by this point. I asked her if it was okay for me to quit my job without a backup job because I was hyper depressed and she agreed. Five days later, right after she bought a new 40k vehicle, sat me down and initiated the breakup, telling me I needed to be out within 30 days. She told me she even already had her friend as a backup ready to move in, and less than a week later I was packing my shit, house dog sitting for her, knowing I'd have to be leaving the place and dogs behind. She was getting super wasted and high in Chicago on her annual vacation that she always planned without me, annual trip with her two friends and brother, then proceeded to tell me how she was completely blackout almost the entire time and how great it was. I'm not saying I'm a saint here, but what she did made me feel like such a sucker and loser during the breakup. I was completely broke. My checking account locked me out. I was unemployed and couldn't find anywhere to go but I thankfully was able to move back in with my parents and sister. That in itself felt super mortifying, but it cemented it as one of the most I have to get the d out of here and back to ducking sanity moment I've ever had. TLDR I had to live with help out my ex as I moved out of her condo during a messy breakup and leave my first dogs behind. She even kicked out the dog that liked me better, and I was gladly forced to come rescue him from her last Labor Day. Story 9 I was working on a bear research project and encountered a black bear with her cub while out in the forest. She was not one of my research animals, though I'd seen her before. She showed a little too much interest in me, following me at a distance, but getting closer. I was about 200 dinir from my vehicle at least, so I just aborted my field plans and started walking back to my car, keeping an eye on her and my hand on my bear spray. I made it to the car just fine, but that is probably the only bear encounter I've had that had the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. And I've had a lot of bear encounters. Story 10. August 2003. North of Toronto. I'm just coming back from a shift, about to throw on the TV and decompress some around four hours when the power goes out. I shrug it off. Figure it's just a brownout, common enough where I am in the peak of summer, so I decide to grab a quick nap in lieu of the TV. Cut to two nights later. Power's been off this whole time. Neighbors decide to have a huge block party to cook up whatever food we have that's on the verge of not keeping. Seemingly great idea. Cut down on waste, get morale up, etc. It's the third night. Limited lighting save the glow of BBQs and some candles chucks flashlights in a cul-de-sac. This tight-knit neighborhood party turns quickly into a free-for-all with easily five times the initial amount of invitees, the majority of whom none of us know, from the neighborhood anyway. The interlopers are getting or are already drunk, stoned, running off with the food, coolers of beer, a BBQ got stolen too, some minor vandalism. Then the cops get called. When it came to dealing with this, I guess it's easier to detain people and then confirm they live there than to ask what effectively turned into a mob to give out ID. I booked it home before I got caught up in the aftermath of that mess. Next day, the power's back up. Couldn't have one nice neighborly party without a bunch of marauders showing up to ruin it. Story 11. Met a guy in a bar. Casual conversation developed. The place was dead so he suggested we go into a nearby city, as he knew a joint that would be crawling with pussy. When we got to the city, he wanted to stop at a haji mart, came out with an empty Coke can, and said a place we needed to go was in the next block. On the way there, he proceeded to ventilate the can. When we got to the location, he said, be right back. And as soon as he was out of sight, I took off and returned to the original bar. He showed up in a cab about an hour later, higher than a kite, and hit up the barmaid. Turns out it was his GF for the cab fare. She got pissed, as he'd been telling her that he was now clean, and she then proceeded to blame me for his relapse. He was huge pissed because I took off on him and decided he should get his pound of flesh. As my beer bottle was empty, I took it by the neck and smashed the end on the edge of the bar, and it broke perfectly to display nice jagged edges in his direction. Another patron was smart enough to grab him and usher him away. I left the bartender at $20, and she did reduce her anger toward me when I was able to share that her BF told me he wanted to go to the city to get laid, 
and never said one word about his real reason, and had I known the real reason I wouldn't have taken him two feet, bad night, wasn't able to get buzzed, didn't get laid, but came close to getting really ducked, never went back to that joint. Story 12. I got invited to a three-way by two attractive women I knew when I was in my mid-twenties. I thought, cool, jackpot. I meet them at a hotel and we have fun for a couple hours before there is a knock on the door. Suddenly, another guy walks in. The two women get embarrassed, apologize, and tell me they didn't think I'd be there that long. So they invited another guy. I think, okay, this is a little weird, but what the hell. Another two hours go by and there is another knock on the door. Two more guys walk in. It turns out they had lined up a whole string of men to show up throughout the night and didn't think any of us would find out. I noped out of there at that point. I was leaving a festival in a bad area of a major city. I'd gone down to the subway to say bye to my friends. I lived like 20 minutes out and had yet to figure out how I was going to get home. Public transport didn't go that way. I was walking out of the subway just trying my best to not seem ducked up. I was on act. I turn around and see like seven cops. Look down and see some dude just lying face down on the ground. Got the hell out of there. LOL edit. Just thought of another one. This was back in middle school. I was hanging outside this laser tag place with a few friends. Cop pulls up and tells us to go inside. My friends listened, but I was a little shit low L. So I walked to the alley on the other side of the building. There was this wooden fence that separated the alley from this sketchy bar. I sat down leaning against said fence. I hear two dudes yelling at each other, getting closer and closer to the fence. All of a sudden, I hear a gunshot and feel the force of a limp body slamming into the fence followed by the sound of him hitting the ground and footsteps of the other guy running away, bolted inside. Didn't even tell anyone about that for years. Story 15. Stayed at a hostel for one night. Woke up and met the one other woman in the room, who was like maybe 45 years old. I'm 21. I was on vacation, but I'm pretty sure she was a homeless woman who was just living there. Not an issue for me. So I said hi to her, said a bit about myself. She started ranting about herself and her life. It got pretty dark quickly when she started talking about the people who she hates. I didn't ask her. I basically only said hi. But apparently, one landlord she used to have would make her leave her rented room early in the morning every day for years. Which wasn't nice. But then she said the landlord's son died. And she was saying it was karma. That she deserved it. That she was happy the son died. That the landlord killed her son by being mean to her through karma. She said she called the landlord and told her that it was her fault. I kept a smile on my face until she left. She said I was nice. I quickly went to the reception and upgraded my room to a single room where I don't have to share. I think saying you're glad someone died is a bit heavy for a first-time conversation. I just felt like something was wrong with her, and I didn't want to sleep in the same room as her again. This was my second day in the U.S. Story 16 we lived in a neighborhood in Seattle, Washington. There was this old Victorian house across the street. Most beautiful house I've ever seen with a large oak tree in the one-acre front yard. Bushes followed the two driveways that lead to the front door. Three large trees in the front. Purple flowers everywhere. Orange and pink roses. A cherry blossom tree. I remember playing in the snow and making my first and only igloo there. Truly magical. When the owners died... The family didn't take the house, so it was bought by a town home company looking to build residential properties. They didn't start for four years after they bought it, causing the house to grow shabby, uncared for, and a rabbit and bird haven almost made it more peaceful, yet sad because there were pictures in the windows of a family, a cat door, a small handprint on the window. The house weirdly seems alone, but people who stole from houses used the home to store stolen property computers, artwork, etc. So one night I decided to check it out being the dumbass that I was. When I opened the back door, which was used to break in by others a few steps in, and I heard loud stomping noises leading to the basement stairway, they knew I was there. I stood there like an idiot for a few seconds before booking it out the door and running to the alley, way that led to my house. IDKY, but that shit didn't let me sleep that night. Story 17. Boss freaked out one day and grabbed me by my arm and pulled me into her because she was going to talk sternly to me, I guess. I walked right out of that job. 
The only time you ever need to make physical contact with someone is when you're shaking their hand. Edit with the exception of preventing injury or life-saving techniques. In the workplace, though, grabbing someone out of anger is unacceptable. Story 18. I was at a KFC two days ago. A clearly unwell man was sitting across the restaurant from me as I was trying to eat, mumbling to himself. Eventually, he looked right at me and said, You have to die sometime. Why not today? That's all I needed to hear. I took my last bite, got up, threw my food away and left. Story 19. Me and my friends were out at around 7 p.m. A car parked next to us when three guys got out. Keep in mind, there's four of us. I noticed them suspiciously just walking around us, so I told my friends we should head back before it gets too dark. Two of my friends went to one of their houses, which was pretty much outside where the car was. Me and my other friend, we shall call Steve, walked to his house. While walking, we were making jokes until I got a call from one of the friends at the place with the random car. They said, they're looking in the bushes for you and stuff, be careful. Then hung up when they guys left outside their building. Me and my friend looked at each other and sped up walking. When we got to these two apartment complexes that were right next to each other, we saw the same car pull round the corner. We made a run for it in between these two complexes. When we didn't know what to do, we decided we need to run through an alleyway. I looked over and they tried following us by turning their car round and then started speaking to other people in another car. Luckily, we managed through the alleyway and got to his house safely. I don't stay out late anymore, and that was about a year ago. Story 20. In college, I got a fast food job. The first few days I was working management kept sending me home early to save on labor. Whatever. I didn't care. But for some reason, different managers kept coming up to me and saying, don't get used to this, in an accusatory tone throughout every shift. Every few hours like clockwork, completely unprompted, like I didn't even complain, I don't even know you yet. The tone felt a little bully-esque. It was very strange. Then the owner completely ignored all of my class days. Times we had gone over together, scheduled me to miss the entire first two and a half weeks of my college classes, refused to change it, and blamed me for his error. It set a tone for the experience. I didn't return. Lasted four days. Story 21. A few months before the pandemic, I went out with my friend, her boyfriend, and her family. The dinner was nice, and I had fun. My friend was going to go to the casino with her family, so her BF drove me back into town. We were on the way when he started asking me, since I'm a lesbian, if I ever got gay vibes off of him. I told him no, and that he was the straightest dude I've ever known. He went on to say that he had voices in his head that told him he was gay. I started to get creeped out when he said that, but shrugged it off. He kept bringing up the voices and him possibly being gay. I had to keep reassuring him that he wasn't. We stopped at a subway because I was on my monthly and needed to change. I spent five to ten minutes in there. I came out to find him watching <coughs> on his phone. I was ready to go home, but had to continue to reassure him that he wasn't gay. He asked me if he should watch <coughs> Lesbian Porn to cancel out the gay. I told him no. I still ended up hanging with my best friend and him but told her the next day what he told me. He broke up with her a month later. Story 22. I, A.T. Mees, was walking in the shady side of town with my friend's little sister. 17F. It looked like a chill night. Stars were bright. Full moon. All in all, a good night. After 15 or so minutes, we heard shouting from the woods. Small woods at the eastern side of the city. It was a male and a female. I got curious, so I told the girl I was with to go to the nearest McDonald's. It was 400 or so meters away, and stay there until I arrive. But she told me she wouldn't leave me behind. Plus, she was scared. Told her to stay put. I'll go check what's going on. In the meantime, the screaming continued until I got to the bushes in front of the forest. I was shining my phone's flashlight to see something and saw a man, around 30, 35, running towards me, all bloody, and he had an axe in his hand. That when I knew I wasn't going to stick around, shouted, run to the girl, and we ran into the nearest police station. Maybe one 1.5 can matters from where we were. We told them everything. Three police cars went to the site and arrested the guy right there. He didn't kill the female, but was close to. Never going back there without a weapon. Story 23. In my childhood home, 
My room was always much warmer than the rest of the house since it was directly above the furnace. In the summer months, I would walk around my yard at night to cool off. One night I was doing the usual and walked near our dying apple tree. I thought I saw something move, but since it was dark, I wasn't sure. I hadn't cooled down yet, so against my better judgment, I kept walking for another ten steps before getting the feeling that something was wrong. I went back inside after that, but kept checking behind me. The next morning was a Saturday, which was when I picked up sticks early so my brother could mow the lawn before it got too hot out. I made my way to the tree and saw several paw prints in the dew near the apple tree. Under the apple tree itself was the new, less than a day old, corpse of a rabbit. Now it's a possibility that the neighbor across the yard's dogs got out and did that, since their yard is right near the tree. But chances are it was a coyote. Story 24. The first one that comes to mind was years ago. I went to a wedding in Nashville, Tennessee. Afterward, a number of guests went to a bar called, I think, Tootsies. It was a three or four story wooden building packed wall to wall with people. I and my girlfriend, at the time, were both paranoid of crowds, so we were communicating with glances and gestures, spotting emergency exits, and trying to find a gap in the crowd. Glimpses of the station nightclub fire video were flashing in my mind. Finally, we got out to an upper story deck that was open, and I was thinking how likely I would be to survive a fall from three stories up if there was a fire. I figured I'd rather the broken legs than dying in a fire. My girlfriend said that she didn't think she could jump and I would have to push her, which I was willing to do. As we were having this conversation, I finally realized that I didn't know any of these people and had no obligation to hang out there and asked, Hey, would you like to get the d*** out of here? And she agreed. It took us nearly 20 minutes to get three floors down and out on the street where we helped each other calm down. Story 25 made a deal on Craigslist to trade a 9mm pistol and $100 for an ATV. Just happened to invite a friend with me for the ride since it was about an hour each way. Showed up to the house and the guy wasn't there. The bike was. Called him and he said, Be there in a minute. Three trucks quickly rolled up. Four guys got out. Just felt weird. We looked over the bike. Wasn't as good of shape as he said. But the deal was good enough. The guy asked to shoot the gun. I didn't have any ammo with me. One of his buddies pulls a gun out of his pocket and gives him a few rounds out of it to shoot. The deal was made. All was good and left unharmed. But it sank in how easily they could have just robbed me for everything. Especially if I went by myself like I had planned. Story 20 eeks. I was in the neighborhood around a college campus in a less than stellar part of the city on a night early on in the George Floyd protests riots. I was hanging out with some friends who grew up mostly in small towns and were fairly sheltered. We were walking around as people were shooting fireworks and generally causing a ruckus. It was pretty cool until the riot cops showed up, the kind amassed at the edge of the neighborhood. So at first I wasn't super worried, figured it was just crowd control. A few minutes later across the city, an old strip mall got hit with looters, and as people were shouting the news in the crowd, I saw the cops taking their badges off. I immediately turned to my friends and said, We gotta duck and go now. But they were all confused. Towny white boys had never really given thought to what riot cops from the city were capable of, but I knew nothing good was about to happen. Story 27 I was raised Catholic, but I'm not a big fan of organized religion. Catholicism is not for me. After confirmation, I don't think I stepped into a church for years except for a weddings I was invited to. Fifteen years or so after leaving that behind, I felt empty. For various reasons, I turned to my relationship with a higher power and ending up finishing a non-denominational church service that I enjoyed. It helped me reflect on my spiritual journey and relationship with God. The community was made up of maybe 100-130 people, so it was a small community that seemed very supportive of each other. But one Sunday, I walked into the church after two-ish years of going there and realized not a single person took time to chat or develop some relationship choose friendship with me beyond the greeters, welcoming me with small talk. No one in my two years tried to get to know me. I was there for community and I didn't feel welcomed in that one. As services started, that need to get out of here feeling overwhelmed me, and I noped right out. Haven't been back, and not one person has reached out to me, despite Facebook connections.
Story 28 used to be the driver for a circle of friends who sold small time early 2000s. One was a close friend from high school who started to adapt and morph into the thug persona outside of close friends. He knew that shit didn't fly with me. Dude used to have dreads and introduced me to classic rock and reggae when I was listening to Nails and Warp record stuff. Anyways, one day we're headed to drop some stuff off. We get to the house and he gets out of the passenger side and starts shooting rounds at it with a small pistol. I'm mega pissed and he's of course like drive, pulled me into being a drive by accomplice. We got away, serious breach of trust, and we weren't friends for quite a while. Eventually, with age, he chilled out and we hung out again sporadically. Duck him in that era, though. Story 29. A friend of mine said she was meeting a guy and his friend that she'd met on holiday and did I want to join. I wasn't sure, but they were going to this mega expensive, basically non-bookable club later that evening. So I agreed. Anyway, we went along and these guys were total assholes. Rude and arrogant. They paid out like 1k on a bottle of champagne and stupid amounts on vodka. No matter how much I drank, my guard was so high. I wasn't getting drunk. My friend turned to me and said, Now they've spent all this money, we have to sleep with them. I said it was time to leave, but she adamantly wouldn't leave, so I left. When I saw her the next day, she had slept with one of them, and she hadn't been treated nicely at all. Story 30 was desperate and needed a job. Because of this, I was also looking for anything that I could get my hands on. Luckily, for them, a playground construction company was hiring. I start working for them, and notice right away they seem to be skirting safety. They allow me to get on a forklift without any training at all. Here I am, driving a huge piece of equipment around other guys and everyone is just fine and dandy with this. I keep thinking of what would happen if I accidentally hurt someone or even hurt myself. Later, we are grabbing seven to eight long beams of wood. These are stacked in a trailer. There must have been hundreds that we are grabbing and setting on a shelf. I bend down to grab one and get hit in the head with another guy's wood. Yes, I know. I'm rubbing my head as it's kind of aching now. I ask my supervisor why we don't wear hard hats. He laughs and says, we don't need those. We just watch what we're doing. Duck that. Emma head out. I quit a few minutes later. Story 31. I was on vacation with my parents at a hotel in the middle of nowhere, literally, just between some mountains, forest all around with a few trails. We were bored, so me and my friends decided to look around and go hiking. After a five-minute walk, we found an abandoned car, nothing suspicious at the beginning. But as we approached, we immediately saw four or five perfect rectangular pits, like one five two meters deep. I'd say suitable for a human. Near that, a lot of bottles, a teddy bear, a few dolls, matches and ashes from a recent fire. But the car looked just fine. We got spooked, but continued our walk after the investigation of the car. 5,100 meters away, we saw another car, deeper in the woods. Immediately had a very weird feeling, like we weren't supposed to be there at all. On top of all, one day later, my brother, who was with me then, got seriously ill and we had to leave that place. I'm still thinking if we encountered some type of ritual there. Also, I don't know if it's important, but it was a full moon eclipse that day. Story 32. Back in the 80s, bar hopping with a group of friends. We go in this one bar. Guy is staring at me, but not in the usual way. A guy stares at a girl in a bar. He had the most hateful look on his face, like he wanted to kill me. It gave me the creeps. When I walked away, he followed me and just stood there giving me this hateful stare. I pulled one of our friends, I'll call him Jimmy, aside and tell him very quietly that I want to leave and why. The creepy guy shows up again and is now standing right behind Jimmy. I whisper, he's behind you, through my teeth. Jimmy looks behind him, then looks back at me and asks, oh, you mean death? Without another word, we all left the bar. When we were heading toward the car, I looked back to see the same creepy dude standing outside the bar giving me that same horrifying look. I had nightmares about it for weeks afterward and never went back to that area. Story 33. This was a little over a year ago. My friends in college decided that we should all go smash those Japanese soda bottles and pull the marble out of them for fun. No idea why, but I said sure, 
Let's do it. So we all get to this smoke box, and the first guy shows us how to do it. The bottles are in plastic bags, so the glass won't hurt anyone. Well, I decided that I would go next. I throw the bottle and completely shatter one of the glass panels of the smoke box. I think a part of me died when that happened. I'm a pretty avid rule follower, so it didn't sit well with me. We all looked at each other and kinda had a communal we need to ducking leave moment. Everyone thought it was ducking hilarious, but I was on the verge of tears. The entire time we speed walked back to our dorms. Thankfully, it was nighttime and we were all wearing masks, so I was never identified. But a couple days after, I remember seeing a police car near the smoke box with a bunch of caution tape. Story 34. 2007, I was walking to work. A man pulls up next to me and says to get in his car. I refuse. He pulls out a gun to threaten me. I run zigzag behind his car and turn down a street with loads of shops. Running behind him into a populated area probably saved me because he couldn't physically shoot behind him. It took but a half a second to just run, simply because I would take my chance out here before I get taken somewhere secluded, and God knows what else would happen. Story 35 the day before I start my new job, all the new employees are telling me good luck because everyone who had my position quit. Soon after being hired, I thought maybe they were just messing with me. The next day, I speak with the boss of the area for me. I was hired in a deli, and she tells me how there's this crazy co-worker who made the last guy quit, and throughout the day they were telling me what to do while mentioning that we are severely understaffed. There was three of us total. On top of that, they mentioned customer were a pain to deal with. So, the very next day, I do not show up for work, and I do not tell them either. I feel bad for not saying anything, but TBH, they sort of freaked me out. I did not like the vibe I was getting. Plus, for only 12 Archer, I was better off working for McDonald's, which I did end up doing. Much better experience, and better co-workers. Story 36 Sophomore year, and I'm at a party with mostly friends from school, but there's one small group I didn't know except for a girl from my English class. Didn't know her that well either. Her group leaves on a beer run, and by that time, I'm lit. Got the munchies and saw a little Debbie snack cake on a table. I ate it, and turned out it was the girl from my English class. Once she found out, she slapped my face, punched me, threw a beer in my face, and kicked me in the gonads. I pushed her off me and get... <laughs> Ten minutes later, as I was walking home, here comes a speeding car, screeching to a halt in front of me. Of course, it's her boof and his entourage. Calmly, explained Sitch, and he sympathized that she was arguing with him before they arrived. His group were satisfied with my explanation and left. Saw her that week in class. She apologized, and I stayed away from her for final two years of high school. Story 37. One day, I just wanted to eat lunch alone as I use my phone. So then I randomly just picked a spot to sit at and eat my lunch. So then I picked the spot or sat there, ate my lunch for a bit. Until these group of girls came around. They weren't mean, but I just felt like the only guy that was actually sitting at that lunch table. Actually, that's not the reason why I left that table. But anyways, yeah. I eventually left that table and moved to another table, and these girls weren't being mean to me or anything. I just didn't want to be around them. I wanted to be alone somewhere. I don't have the fear of tight spaces, but my inner introvertedness kicked in. So then apparently, there wasn't any empty tables that were not occupied for the whole lunch break. So then I just sat with a few people at the table that I moved to and ate my lunch there, dumped my tray, went back, sat back down, and used my phone until lunch was over. Story 38. There was that one day that there had been a shooting spree at one of our local shopping malls. That evening, I went to get some groceries in a different mall. Just when I had paid and put the stuff in my bag, a policeman entered and said, Everyone, stay calm. There has been a bomb threat. Since I was so close to the exit, I just went to my bike as fast as I could and cycled him in a very long way around that mall. Turned out it was false alarm. The shooter had left a letter behind with fake threats. I get why they took it seriously. I barely understood what was happening back then. I was just like, yeah, I'm leaving right now. Story 39. Me and a buddy were booze cruising with a female friend 20 years ago, rural. 
in the country. That's what you did sometimes. The female friend is married and me and the other friend have no questionable intentions with this girl whatsoever. I was still a virgin even, and we were all just having a merry tipsy time together on gravel roads. But when we brought her back to her home, her husband was drunk and he was pissed. Being only 20 years old and having a shotgun pointed at your face from 10 feet away by a drunken man, 50 LBs heavier and stronger than you will sober you, you up and give you the most clear-headed reasoning and placating abilities that you have ever had in your life. Story 40. I went to see what my dog was eating in my sister's bedroom, and I found out that it was a used condom. I decided to go take a walk, for I accidentally touched it. First, I need to get out moment, and while walking, it was starting to get dark. So I was looking behind me a lot, and a car stopped near me, and I knew it wasn't because that guy was lost. A man came out of the car, and he was coming near me. I walked to the grocery store near and called my parents. For at least four minutes, this guy was looking at me, literally having a panic crisis. I know that, because when I came out from the grocery store, he was still there. Second GTFO moment. Later I learned I was actually walking in a p hunting zone, for my friend told me they had the same experience several times. I never saw that guy again. Story 41. It's nothing crazy, but these kids. It was in elementary. They had took me to some part of the apartment. Were we live and told me, you trying to play Ding Dong Ditch? And this was after school. To so I said, yeah. And all of a sudden, I hear one of them whispering something about me to one of the other boys. And he said, yeah, he's gonna cry to his mommy. So in my head, I thought, oh man, they're plotting on snitching on me. But then we get to this part of the apartment where hardly anybody walks by and the leader of the group pushes TF out of me to the floor and I quickly get up and I'm like, oh shoot, they're gonna jump me. So I get a medium sized rock. I'd say throw it at his head. Bro was bleeding and I'd just run to my house and TBH IDK why they wanted to jump me honestly, but it was interesting. Story 42. A couple years ago, I went to an all girls Christian camp. Everything was fun. And I was having a good time until two adult counselors slept with each other while there. The cabins we stayed in weren't that big, and we were in the middle of nowhere, so any sudden movements woke me up. On the first night when everyone was in bed, I heard moaning from the bathroom area. I just put in my AirPods and played some white noise. Then that morning, a girl that slept two bunks away from mine had woken up with no bottoms on. In my mind, I was like, God, I can't do this anymore. As for the counselors, the group of girls they had to keep were sixth graders. So you know they told on them. It was embarrassing, but funny, because they were both very rude and would get onto someone any chance they were given. Story 43. A few years ago, my car was having problems and it was cold, so I was Ubering to work most days. One day, my Uber driver was a really nice older, 50s or 60s guy in a tie and jacket. Over the 10-minute drive, he started talking about how the Bible had been poorly interpreted and he had taught himself Hebrew and Aramaic so that he could go back to the original texts and reinterpret them like a modern-day prophet. He continued to explain that he had started a Bible study for a group of people, and they were going on a retreat to a state park, and he wanted to buy a house in the woods for his new denomination of Christian originalists. And I was sitting there thinking, this guy is starting a cult. It starts with this and ends with Kool-Aid. I was glad to get out of that Uber. Story 44. I was partying with some friends in their apartment. We were all underage, and my friend, let's call her Tiffany, is ducking tanked. She stumbles into her boyfriend's room, who is also completely sloshed, and starts yelling about him sleeping with other girls. He comes back at her about sleeping with other men, at which point it got physical, and she slammed her head into a doorpost and called the police, saying he is trying to kill her. He tries to leave and get in his car, I have to follow him down to tell him not to do that. And she comes running out of their apartment into the parking lot, fully naked. They get into a full-on fistfight. At that point, I tried to just walk away, but the police showed up and detained all of us for about three hours to question the whole thing. Story 45. A co-worker I barely knew and I took off during a lunch break and headed for a local lonely mountain road to pull over and smoke a blunt. While there, we listened to the radio. A bulletin comes over the radio about a serial killer on the prowl somewhere in the local area. 
They described him. I look over to my co-worker, who looks exactly like what was being described. I must have had a horrified look on my face because he goes, Oh, wow, that sounded like they were describing me. Ha ha ha. I told him to drive me back to work immediately, and the whole way I had my hand on a nail file in my purse, ready to stab him somewhere if he pulled over again. He just kept laughing all the way back, seeing how terrified I was. Asshole. Story 46. My friend and I were at a party a few years ago in a funky warehouse where there were a lot of drugs, alcohol, and it was a bit rowdy. The host was following me around the whole time, but I didn't really pay much attention. We were in a group in a bedroom talking to someone when the host's girlfriend started yelling and screaming about him following me around all night and gave him the most almighty slap I have ever had the pleasure to witness. My friend and I looked at each other and in perfect unison ran out the front door. I honestly didn't really pay that much attention to him, and did he really notice her at all, but she must have taken notice of me. It's a great story now, though. Story 47. The moment I got yelled at by my boss. Doesn't matter what the yelling was for. It was the first time any boss had ever yelled at me. I had seen this boss yell at other people before. He must have thought it was an effective management technique or something. In that moment, I realized... You don't pay me enough to yell at me. The next moment, it dawned on me that nobody pays me enough to yell at me. Within a week, I had another job lined up. When I gave him my two weeks notice, I didn't say why, but he knew exactly why. Nobody pays you enough to yell at you. Ever. Story 48. Was asked to ride into the city with a friend because he had a job interview. He wanted to grab food and beers after. I was not told it was for an MLM pitch in a hotel ballroom where I was going also. Sat one hour watching a guy with a George Hamilton tan and bad suit scream. How a job stands for journey onto brokenness. And investing in the scheme is freedom and stacks of cash. I bailed, drank beers until he came out of it. I wanted to choke him. It was worse because he bought in and was making plans to buy a huge house and move to some exotic locale. He came to his senses a few weeks later and found a real job, thankfully. Story 49. Now, ex-wife left me alone in her brother's den while she ran an errand. It was a rural area, probably 12 adults in the house. Hard to tell as they were kind of in a heap on the ground. An old woman sat at the table with me, meticulously tracing every letter in a magazine. Every once in a while, this one guy screamed for no reason. There were also about six kids scrambling around unsupervised. A pit bull named Brutus rested his head on my knees the whole time, seemingly sharing my desire to escape. Story 50. Holidays in Morocco. Saw some ad about a stupid festival in the mountains. Went there, and our hotel manager just said, Nope. Stupid ass went anyway. Only white European on sight. There was a political rally. Suddenly some police pulled us out and behind a police line. We got the message and went back to the hotel. Was at a backyard house party in the mid-90s just grooving to the DJ when I heard a pop pop. That's when in my peripheral vision I saw the guy who had been standing a few feet away from me crumble to the ground like a rag doll. Then I heard screams and yelling, and then my cousin standing on the other side of me, grabbing my collar and yelling, Run! It was a gang hit, and they were pulling straps left and right. We didn't want to get caught in the crossfire. We got out okay, but it was pretty chaotic. And me, all of 15, the 90s in SoCal's hoods, barrios were crazy. When during an argument with my mom about my upcoming wedding and them withdrawing support, I had a panic attack. She watched in silence, and what I can only interpret as numbness, as I laid on the floor unable to breathe for about 30 minutes, and had it not been for my dog, I'm not sure I would have been able to pull myself out of it. That's when I knew I had to move out, and I did two weeks later, started a job that I excel at to this day, and am happily supporting myself, and will marry the love of my life in two months. Story 55. Was 16 or 17? My best friend and I went over to her friend's house. She was sitting on the floor with a few other girls and had a revolver and was playing Russian roulette. I immediately just stood up, asked my friend if she wanted to leave with me. She said she was staying. I just said bye and walked out the door. Story 56. I live near a forest that has a lot of suspicious people, mainly at night. Illegal tents drug needles, etc. One summer, some years ago, my friend and I liked to go there because of beatiful nature, and it felt kind of adventurous. Once she told me she just saw a man walking into the sea holding a knife. We both got the duck out of there. 
I went to a party with friends. I'm a socially awkward introvert, but I like to be with my friends. They invited me, and I thought it would be like my birthday when I was seven or something. Loud music. Lots of people I didn't know, and I just sat on a couch and ate chips. One of my friends asked if I wanted to dance. I have a hard time saying no, but I never danced before. I just walked on place and went back to my couch after a minute. I will probably never go to parties again. Story 59 I was finishing round one with this girl, and we started to warm up for round two. When she asks me if I'm an Aries, I said, yes, I am. She says that the love of her life must be an Aries. Until then, everything is fine because she is hot. But then, this bitch start telling me that I have someone trying to speak to me from afterlife. I noped out of her house so fast and never talked to her again. Story 60 in high school, I went to see a movie at the theater with a boy I was dating at the time. Before we even got into the movie and found our seats, there was a creepy-ass old man taking pictures of me on his phone. I was probably 15 at the time, also a girl. It was so scary and uncomfortable. Told the manager about it. They tracked him down, and he didn't even have a ticket. The day I realized creeps are far more prevalent than I had previously thought. Story 61 Major fight between our school and one of our rival schools. I wanted to skive off for the day anyway. So when all the faculty was busy breaking this fight up, I just bolted out the front gate where my buddy picked me up and we drove off past about five police cars and a riot van speeding towards the school, smoked bowls and jammed some PS3 at his place whilst kids were getting arrested left, right and center back at school. Story 62. Just today. Parked me car on the street in the city near where I work. Some asshole parks in front of the hydrant and starts shouting at me. I assume he wanted a spot and not have to parallel park. It's street parking to bad. Nothing good would have come of it. When a man starts treating a woman from a car, he only has bad intentions. I hurriedly went to hide in my secure building at work. Story 63. I was at a dive bar in Reno. Ev with a group of friends when a rather attractive MILF started hitting on my buddy. It took me a minute to see the group of glowering gorillas sitting next to her. I knew what was up instantly. I had to drag my buddy away and later explain that I had zero interest in being a punching bag for nothing. Story 64. I was at a party and a girl lost her jewel vape. She was like, nobody leaves until I find my jewel. I, of course, did not take her jewel. I'm not interested in Jewel. And I was just like, okay, this is trashier than a Jerry Springer episode. And it gaff about any of this. I'm leaving no matter what. And I left. As I got my shit together to leave, she found it. But I was still all too glad to get Tyfe out of there. Story 65. Worked around a coal mine for a few months. Won the last day I worked there. I outright told the foreman to not bother calling me tomorrow. I quit. All because if I had to listen to him tell that I missed a spot cleaning a bolt roofer one more time, I would have sprayed him with the pressure washer and punch him. I know it seems like an overreaction, but it was ever damn day I worked there. Story 66. When I got blood reassured and heartbeat taken at work and it was a 150 and had a few dizzy spells including a couple of collapses, all proven to be work stress related and got out of there and back to normal health within 18 months. HR very supportive as the company knew they had caused this and I was also driving 400 miles a week. In hindsight, I should have got out quicker but made it all the same. Story 67 Woke up after a party where about six or seven people were all passed out in the same room. Decide to go back to sleep. But I hear a bit of moving and then moaning starts. And I realize two people are having sex. I immediately get up. See, they are literally two feet from other people sleeping. And just yell, you guys are d***ed. And left.